My name is Chris Lombardosi. I'm the Chief Medical Officer and Vice President at the Portmore Regional Healthcare System. I've been with the system for about 16 years. I'm an emergency medicine physician. Okay, so can you just generally walk us through uh, the new visitation rules? Absolutely. So as many of you are already aware, um, throughout the country, we are extraordinarily concerned about the safety of our patients and our staff, as well as all the visitors. And although to date we still only have one person in all of Spartanburg County, Union County, and Cherokee who have tested positive, we certainly expect that that will change. And so out of an abundance of caution and concern for all of our staff and, and the patients and the visitors, we feel this is a, a difficult but necessary uh, change that we've had to make. The restriction is fairly tight. Uh, we, we are limiting um, visitors to OB patients, pediatric patients, and folks who are at end-of-life conversations and care. There are some small exceptions to that, but essentially we, we really do not want visitors in the hospital, if at all possible. And the current rule is one visitor at a time and no visitors under the age of 18, correct? That's correct. No children. Uh, it'll be one visitor at a time, and the expectation is that the visitor stays in the room with the family member or friend that they're here to see. And are you going to be screening the visitors as they come in? So we, we certainly can. Uh, we like to say that we have the, the, the ability to do that. Uh, we have greeters at every single hospital location who will ask those questions and make sure that people are safe before they enter. So now you're encouraging people who are now unable to visit their loved ones, a lot of cases in the hospital. How are you encouraging those people to communicate with their families? So it's a great, great question. And the beauty of today's era, unlike 10, 15, or 20 years ago, is that now almost everyone has some form of social media and at the very least a phone that we can do things like FaceTime or, or other ways of communicating. Our nursing staff, as well as our physicians, are well aware of the burden that this plays for the, the families as well as the patients. And so we're encouraging different forms of communication. I will say that this type of crisis forces our folks to be innovative, and they are. So what are the things you're hearing from your fellow medical staff? So the medical staff are fine. They are well aware of the difficulty of this. Uh, they are well prepared. Um, we, we communicate on a regular basis so that they're aware of the, the situation. And, and certainly, it is, is no surprise to anyone who's listening that this situation seems to be changing on a daily basis. So keeping people updated as best we can, asking people to be flexible and adaptable, that's really the key. And, and you know, I should add, it's not just the medical staff, it's everyone. Uh, it's the community, it's our, our staff, it's the local businesses that have been uh, really disrupted by this. We, we feel for everyone who's, who's been impacted by this crisis. Uh, can you walk me through the protocols with nursing homes as well? It's my understanding that visitors are extremely limited to nursing homes right now. Yeah, so CMS came out with uh, very, very strict guidelines a few days ago, and, and really they, they cut down on visitors long before the hospitals did, um, and so we just continue to follow those restrictions. They are very tight. The nursing homes are reaching out to the families of the, the people who live there to keep them informed and find different ways to communicate. Absolutely. Is there anything new that you've learned with the COVID-19 virus recently? Any, uh -huh, any new information you've learned with it about the treatments, how it's reacting? That yeah, another great question. Um, is there a treatment for COVID-19? And to date, there is not. Uh, we still continue to provide supportive care. The good news, and, and there is some good news, is that Although we're seeing cases all over the world and certainly in the United States, uh, still most people who are affected by it have mild to moderate symptoms. There will be deaths and we know that amongst the vulnerable population, the elderly, the folks with underlying medical conditions, um, that's certainly a, a high risk population. Um, but overall, it's, it's something we can, we can manage. So I've heard talk that uh, even for younger people, there is concern that this could cause things like permanent lung damage. Do you know of any truth to that? So I think what's going to happen is that over the next few months, we'll see more and more research. The folks in China, certainly the, the earliest who are affected, there is some, some research going on right now, and time will tell. We, we just don't know enough about this right now.